A Missionary Called by Joseph Center Part 1, Chapter 12 It's funny, Aaron, how perspective is kind of everything. You probably do not even remember this conversation. It was after my job interview. Probably it did not mean much to you, just another living room to kitchen chat like a million others. You said, morning, when I got home. You had no idea what was going on inside me. I replied, hey, Aaron, how was the interview? I shrugged, I think, exhaling, pretty good, I think, I said, and continued mumbling, for better or worse, hmm? Nothing. You were sitting on the floor, facing the TV, your back to the couch, and I distinctly remember wondering if you noticed something was not right. I wonder still if maybe there was even the slightest inkling of your brother's trouble. That little part of me, the last smoldering element of my spirit not bastardized and displayed at church on Sundays and during home teaching outings, wanted, really wanted you to know, to see me, to truly see me. I sat on the armrest. You sat eating a bowl of cereal. Dad? I asked. His room, with the newspaper. And either you did not notice anything wrong, most likely, or you, I know, I know, I'm a heartless jerk for even thinking it, or you did and did not care to feel it out. You know how you know something quietly in your brain, or even your soul, but the doubts of your heart shout louder? Or do I have that backward? So I pivoted. How's Katie? I asked. Fine. Do anything fun? Mini pizzas and marshmallows on a campfire. Then the Princess Bride waffles this morning with jam. You had breakfast? Mm Mm-hmm. Then what's with the cereal? You turned and looked at me perfectly sarcastically. You've never had Sister Sickler's waffle casserole? You grimaced. I don't know what she does. And your voice trailed off, mouth moving slowly, eyes wide and head wagging. Together, silent a moment, we watched a commercial for Tootsie Pops. You drank down the milk left in the bowl. Work tonight? You nodded. Need a ride? You nodded again. Ellie coming over? Yeah. You told her yet? Last night, after Casper's party. What'd she say? I shifted on the worn armrest. Nothing, really. Just asked questions about it. What do you think? Hmm? About her. What do you think she thinks? I smiled again, weakly. I don't know. I think she'll be okay with it. You persisted. What do you think? The armrest was hard and uncomfortable, but we sat like this all the time anyway, one on the armrest, the other with a cereal bowl in the television. Doesn't matter, really, I guess. I'm going anyway. We sat a moment, still in our places, without looking at the TV. You finally stood. I'm glad you told her. You walked to the sink to clean your bowl and spoon. You used soap, unlike me, and set them in the dish rack on the counter, unlike me. Scott was there this morning, you said. Yeah, I called back from the couch. He and Bo go four-wheeling. Yeah, you said, then paused. Scott asked a weird question. (laughs) Sounds like Scott. What did he mean by it? Mean by it? I don't know. He always asks weird questions. I waited. About you, anyway. Something about poetry, I sneered. You shook your head. I knew it was coming. He asked if you knew about a book called... I waited again, blind, and felt the blood and its heat drain from my face. Something about the magical something, Mo, or something. The magical monarch of Mo. Yeah. I managed to look and sound calm, but again, I wished you caught the turmoil. What about it? I don't know. You shook your head with light confusion. Your hair swung, and you squinted your eyes. I asked him how was I supposed to know what you know, and that I didn't know anything about it. What'd he say? Nothing. Just grinned and left on his four-wheeler with bow. I stood up. My back creaked. So when are you going to find out about Cistercian? You asked. And I was relieved and disappointed by the change of subject. This afternoon? Think you'll get it? I don't know. Since Mom had left and Dad got sick, we have learned, or gained, a reliance and trust on each other probably uncommon among teen brothers and sisters. We were still in the kitchen. You leaned against the counter and looked at me hesitated, and I waited while you got your thoughts together. Think she'll wait? You finally asked, changing the subject again. Ellie? Well, duh. Think she'll wait for you. I had mulled this question over almost as much as I had telling her I was leaving. I came up short. I don't know. Well, do you want her to? I examined my shoes. Yeah, I do. What do you really think that she thinks? She loves me, I said with a shrug. 
Or she told me she does. And you? Yeah, I do. What if she doesn't wait? I mean, you said it really didn't matter. Well, of course it matters. So do you think she's like, you know, the one? The one? I don't know. Your face scrunched. Sorry. Will your heart break? My lungs heaved. Well, it matters, you said. I mean, of course it matters. I sucked the air back in, composed myself, and said, Right now it matters. You're right. It could change? It's two years, Aaron. Anything can change in two years. <laughs>